Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 3 of How to Speedrun Actually Anything. The first two episodes covered finding a speed game and the hardware that you'll need to do runs. So now let's look at the software and things required to get recordings or streams of your speedruns going. The next episode will be about how to learn and best practices for learning speed games. The playlist for the series will be in a card in the top right corner. The first thing recommended is to download a stream software. If you're recording off of a phone or don't have a computer, you can skip this. There are three main programs that I'll be going over, starting with Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS. This is pretty much the most widely used streaming software out there, and it's fairly easy to set up. Putting your game or other things on the layout is fairly simple. Just click on the plus, the type of thing you're adding, and go from there. For the most part, capture cards and webcams fall under video capture device, and PC games should usually be captured with game capture. Other types, such as image or text, can be used for layouts. Going into the OBS settings, most of what you're going to want to change will be under the Stream and Output tabs. If you're streaming on Twitch, you can connect your account directly through OBS to access chat or stream information, as well as directly stream to your account without having to worry about a stream key. In the Output tab, change the Output mode to Advanced. Now you'll have some more options with streaming and recording output, including bitrate and file path for recordings. I'm not the most well versed in determining what settings are best for your computer, but there are plenty of tutorials out there to assist. The next streaming software that you can use is Streamlabs OBS. This software is very similar to OBS itself, as Streamlabs OBS is built off the base OBS platform. As such, setting up stream, video quality, and the like are the same. Streamlabs OBS integrates with the Streamlabs platform as well, which includes things like alerts and notifications. Streamlabs OBS also offers a premium monthly subscription to allow for more apps and things to grow your brand as a streamer, if that's something you're interested in. The last software I'll be covering is XSplit. To start, XSplit offers a premium subscription as well. However, unlike Streamlabs OBS, XSplit's premium package contains features that the other programs offer for free, such as lack of watermarks to any resolution, unlimited scenes, and a projector mode. XSplit also offers a direct integration to Twitch for streaming, as well as fairly similar settings to OBS. Personally, I use the standard OBS for streaming and recording. I've tried to use Streamlabs OBS and have had multiple issues, such as streams crashing or stopping suddenly, but these bugs may have been fixed since I've last used it. I'd say that Streamlabs is more suited for those trying to make a brand on Twitch without wanting to put in too much effort, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But overall, OBS offers a simple interface, is completely free to use, and is the easiest to get set up. I wouldn't recommend XSplit, because even if you purchase the premium license to it, you can just get the features that you're paying for for free from other softwares. The next software you'll want for speedruns is a splits program, something you'll be using to time your runs. The most popular here is LiveSplit, though there are others such as WSplit or MSplit if you're on mobile. I'm just going to talk about LiveSplit here, but the setup should be fairly similar for the other programs. Upon opening LiveSplit for the first time, you'll get a small window that says 0.00. If you happen to download splits for your game already, you can right-click the window, open splits, from file, and select the split. If you haven't, right-click the window and go to edit splits. From here, you'll enter the game's name and category. After that, you'll enter each segment you'll want to split on, clicking insert below after each one. You may also want to set up the auto splitter for the game if it has one from this menu. After you finish that, right click and save splits. Now you're ready to start timing and splitting. The default hotkey to begin the timer and split is the spacebar, though this can be changed in the settings menu. While you're here, you might want to select double tap prevention, just to avoid accidentally splitting twice. You may also want to pick or change hotkeys for undo and skip splits, just in case of a manual splitting error. Now you're ready to time your run. You'll also want to add the split window to your stream or recording layout using the window capture type on OBS. This isn't required, but is extremely helpful to those that'll be verifying your run and is highly recommended to do. Once you have a run recorded, you can submit your run to speedrun.com or whatever your game uses for leaderboards. This is fairly easy to do and a very similar setup for each game. Go to the games page, go to the categories tab, and click submit run. Fill out the time, platform, the date the run was done on, and any other information. For the video, your best options are to upload the run to YouTube or save a highlight on Twitch if you streamed it there. If you don't save a highlight of the run, the video will be deleted after either two weeks or two months, depending on if you have Twitch Prime or are a partner. Fill out a description of your run if you want, then click submit to submit your run to the mods for verification. If you followed the rules and submitted everything correctly, it'll be verified and you'll be on the leaderboards once the mods approve it. If the mods reject your run, they'll give you a reason why it was rejected. For example, you might have a run rejected due to no video, 
accidentally submitted to the wrong category, or you accidentally broke a rule. There are also some game-dependent programs that you might want to look into, such as practice ROMs and randomizers. There aren't too many games that utilize these yet, but a few of the more popular games offer them, such as Super Mario 64. With a practice ROM or codes, you can easily go to any level that you want to practice it, make save states to return to, among other features. Some of these features can also be used in emulators if you're using one. Things like these can be found in the resources or guides section of a gamespeedrun.com page. A link to a document with a bunch of links to practice ROMs will be in the description, as well as links to everything else mentioned. With the programs mentioned here, you'll be ready to record, time, submit, and maybe practice your run more effectively. If you have any other suggestions for software one might want to use when setting up to record a speedrun, put it in the comments. Now that we're ready to run the game, the next episode will be about how to effectively learn the run. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.